Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, we're back here live in Silicon Valley. This is Big Data SV. This is where all the action is happening. Go to the hashtag Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net, the new application, large scale group conversations directly pumped, pumped into the cube here. Crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV. That's the event we're covering, all the big data innovation here in Silicon Valley and the Strata Conference happening right across the street. All the news, a lot of action, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of VCs, a lot of CEOs, a lot of researchers, a lot of great stuff happening. The commercialization of big data is happening now. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, Jeff Kelly, chief analyst at wikibon.org for big data. And our next guest is Steven Gustafson, R&D manager and Knowledge Discovery Lab lead at GE Research Lab here inside the Cube, about to go out to the Strata stage tomorrow to give a big talk about the industrial internet, big data, a lot of, lot of action around data, and uh, Stephen, you're at the, at the center of it for GE, which is a small player in the big data <laughs> space, or a big data in the small data space. Um, you guys are, are really doing some amazing work with industrial internet, industrial clouds. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, thanks for having um, me. Big company doing a lot of small data. I mentioned kind of a little you know, pun there and a little joke. In reality, GE is about all kinds of data and sometimes little data, but in massive amounts of it. So talk a little bit about your research, okay? And then we'll, we'll, we'll share with the folks some of the things you're working on and about to talk to tomorrow. Okay, sure, so I lead a research team in uh, New York and we're focused on um, looking at research that enables the company to extract insights from data, from data, and to do that faster and uh, and with more accuracy. And so, in some ways, we like to think that we're doing research to help data scientists, as well as the uh, production type of analytics that run at M and D centers and things. So, I talk about the, the GE. Let's get just the GE stuff out of the way. Folks not following at home, and folks that do know us know that we've been all over the industrial cloud, industrial internet. You guys are part of. Uh, Coast Hill with, with your CEO at a panel, Mind and Machines in Chicago, amazing event with amazing, amazing partners, and then here with the developers in San Francisco. Share with them the vision of the GE Industrial Internet and why it's so important to GE and also to the market. Sure. So it's actually, you know, it's a very amazing story. So if we think about what the consumer internet did for uh, uh, the world starting about 10 years ago, you know, you have things now like Amazon putting out, you know, bookstores out of business and Netflix doing amazing things with streaming and it, it, the list goes on and on. And so what, what we started to look at about uh, four years ago is um, how do we take those uh, amazing technologies and successes and transformative things from the consumer space and to bring it into the industrial space. And GE has always been doing a lot of very advanced services like remote monitoring diagnostics um, on this very complex uh, equipment. And as we were watching the consumer internet and things like the internet of things trend, um, having everything being connected, um, it became very apparent that the future in all those advanced services that we do would be in um, what we call the industrial internet, bringing together uh, all the devices, connecting people into that loop, and looking at advanced technologies for like you know managing data, uh, uh, more predictive analytics, and really what's uh, a kind of a cool thing that's focused here in the Bay Area is the new way of doing software. And so, um, you know, for me, working at the Research Center, it's been very exciting because, you know, GE doesn't do things small. So, you know, the, the joke you had before, you know, we used to be called the, the most well-funded startup in the Valley. And so um, it's been very beneficial to me because they bring in great leaders like Bill Rue, who's leading the center out here, and a whole staff of people from across the company, from other companies, uh, to help, help uh, bring the industrial internet to life for our customers. Well, this is potentially a really transformational moment for GE because you really, it seems to me that the future for GE is you're going to be competing less on the machines you're creating and more on the, how you manage and analyze the data coming off those machines. Um, that's going to be, it looks to me, as much of a differentiator and as much of a, a competitive advantage for GE as the actual equipment itself. Uh, we were having some conversations last night with some folks who were, uh, one gentleman was on a board of a company and they were looking to buy a jet engine and they actually made the decision not based on how 
good the jet engine was or uh, the cost, but the fact that GE can actually analyze all that data. Yeah. So uh, talk about this transformation. I mean, it's, it's, gonna, it's a long uh, process, of course, but how do you see this really changing the way GE operates and, and their whole business? Oh, for sure. I mean, the, the aviation is a fantastic business, and they've done extremely well. I was just reading um, online an article, or it was actually an economist, I believe, that they have something like 70% of the engine market share right now in commercial. And um, they've always been a, a great uh, user of data and analytics, but it's really changed recently where a, an aircraft takes off, and they would collect a few data points mm -hmm. from when it was taking off, when it's cruising, when it's landing, yep. and they'd use that to build prognostic algorithms and help you know future flights look for things that might uh, need some maintenance or things. And what what they have uh, done now in this sort of new era of the industrial internet is now they're collecting all the data that they can and figuring out the ways to use that best for the customers. And I think it really is you know transformative. It it changes I think the way that people think about you know building, doing design. You know what kinds of sensors do you need? You know what new services could you offer that are um, going to be the customers are going to like even more? And so you know they already have like fantastic hardware and they've kind of shown that the last couple years um, especially with all the new orders that, that we've been seeing um, and now you know taking this huge step into even more deeper data collection and, and analysis you know I think the customers want that and, and they're stepping up to it so it's pretty exciting right and this spans you know all the different lines of business it's, it's aviation but it's also healthcare it's um, transportation it's um, energy uh, so and, and really you know you mentioned some of the new ways you can use this data. Some of the ways you haven't even thought about yet. So the idea is you collect all this data, and at some point you're gonna you're gonna bring in smart people who are gonna figure out new ways to, to really use this data to 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 the uh, customer's advantage. Um, so tell us a little bit about the research you're doing specifically. What are some of the uh, exciting things you're working on? And um, let's get into that. Sure. Um, so. I, uh, I have a great team, researchers, and then also have lots of colleagues at the center and out here in the Bay Area too. And, um, and so the, the particular area that we focus, my team focuses in, is in what we call big data systems research, so very applicable for strata, and then all, also knowledge representation research. And uh, um, the, uh, the latter is really about helping GE capture its domain knowledge using contemporary knowledge representations, things like the semantic web, if you've heard of that, or linked data. And, um, and so we've been doing some really interesting projects around making it easier for people to analyze data, to, to query data, um, and to build analytics faster. And so that's, that's a, a, a very, I think, important work for especially a company that does build very complicated things, is to look at the medium to gather and host all that knowledge and make it digital and executable. Um, the other part around big data systems research, um, that is also, I mean, this is a fantastic time to be do, being a research scientist in this space. You know, it's, if we go over to the exhibit, uh, the, the uh, hall over in Strata, and we look at all these technologies, you know, all those companies are making these really cool things, and they're all, you know, kind of focused at multiple uh, um, areas, you know, some for finance, also for, um, you know, e-commerce and things. And when we take one of those technologies and want to bring it into the industrial space, there's, you know, maybe it's a security thing that we have to add to it, maybe it's a horizontal scalability because, you know, we're working with a, a massive amounts of time series, which would really dwarf a lot of the transactional, like e-commerce type of data. Um, and so we do research to figure out how to make those things scale. And so, for example, tomorrow I'm going to talk a little bit about how we looked at taking time series data and building a horizontal scalability on top of uh, on top of Hadoop, and um, now that turned into a product that's being sold um, by our G Intelligent uh, Platforms business called Prophecy HD. So that's a very exciting. It's a really nice example of going from research to product. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen, talk about the, the what you're going to talk about Strata on one stage, and 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 connect that from the research side. Because uh, it's exciting, you can essentially apply research in a way because you're bringing stuff to market fast. Talk about what you're going to talk about tomorrow, and then talk about what's going on at G on the research side and some of the trends around how fast it's changing. Meaning, in the old days was, hey, you know, see you later, research, you know, they're having long lunches, who knows what they're working on. Years later, the output of some products. You guys are on a different timetable. I want to kind of touch on that. Well, you know, one of the, the very cool things about what they're doing here in the Bay Area is bringing the concept of platform to the company, and that's very important for research because uh, typically, you know, um, industrial research centers work with the, the industrial partners, their businesses, let's call them, and help develop new technologies for customers. But that technology, that research, still needs to be brought to market somehow. 
And so it's, it can always be, you know, for every corporate uh, R&D center, which there are a few left um, out there today, but it's always difficult to make that, trans that translation to the, to the product. So by bringing in platform, uh, the team out here is really helping the company build software, build more complex software, and do it faster. But from research, it's very exciting because that means that we can develop research directly on the platform and have a faster and more seamless transition to uh, customers. What's the coolest thing you're working on right now? Uh, well, there's, you know, one of the things about GE is that we work with the healthcare business, we work with aviation, transportation, and so there's a lot of different um, uh, segments that we work in. Um, you know, I know that my team right now is really uh, excited about some of the things that we're doing with healthcare, you know, because it's got that really direct link towards um, helping people. And, you know, uh, we work on cool things like aviation. That's, you know, got a great thing around transportation, doing it safe, safely. Um, you know, healthcare right now is a big deal with um, all kinds of new things you can do. Exploration is huge too. If you think about, you know, from an energy standpoint. Right? Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, there's some work that has been going on the center, which I've always been very fond about, which is looking at, um, you know, taking wind turbines, optimizing them, helping customers get more value out of those turbines. And that's a great example of using advanced data analytics. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Emmel was saying when we were doing a panel in Chicago, he's like, you know, a small percentage, 1% change. Mm -hmm. In, 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 in innovation yeah. is billions, Absolutely. say, billions. Yeah. Like not even like, like just that's not a stretch, that's like billions. Yeah. And um, United Airlines was up on the panel and literally he shared a story with me in the green room. He's like, look at, you know, I'll be you know, straight with you, you know, safety's cool and everything, we love that, but you know, gas prices alone mm -hmm. are huge. So for them, the little things like gas prices, yeah. transportation costs to get there, the data involved in, in the streamlining of the processes, process improvement, has mm -hmm. been fantastic. Yes, you know that one of the things I'll mention tomorrow in the talk is that, um, you know, a lot of people think this kind of era of of improving productivity has been sort of over. You know, and GE pioneered some of the things with like Lean Six Sigma and, and process improvement, um, but really with having more data around manufacturing yeah. processes, you know, any kind of process, it's really transforming the way that, that the transparency that you have. And then when you start running analytics on it, you have a real time look at the manufacturing process and how in and, and real time look at how you can make adjustments, you know, how you could get more uh, better yield, more uh, throughput. And that's really exciting. You know, this I love the ability to collect this data and get that insight and this constant feedback. I mean, I love I love that whole it's been overplayed. Oh, you know, and Drucker process management, all that stuff has been, you know, it's maxed out. But when you look at the new data, and this is what Jeff and I talk about in the cube all the time is that and what we get excited about, like you, is this, it's radically changing the value chains because the activities are also being disrupted. So every activity in the value chain is now radically disrupted. Yeah. So again, it's like, okay, it's just evolution. I mean, I guess, so we're yeah. gonna call it instrumented, in, instrumented data, tie it into the users now. So it's like, it's just so exciting. I mean, I think that's why I always laugh. It's like, oh yeah, we're pretty much maxed out. Well, the opportunities yeah. are massive. You know, uh, supply chain is maybe a, a good one to finish on on this topic because that's something where it's it's extremely critical to a company like GE to have good, solid supply chains. And we make things that are made out of uh, very complicated materials, work with suppliers that make very high precision um, components. And so having good supply chain is, is very, very important. And in the past, it's been hard to see, you know, with great transparency and real-time data, you know, where how the supply chain is performing. And so now with with, you know, advanced data and software and analytics, the insight into that is really, is gonna really change things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, it's good for everybody. You know, I, this, the stuff that Walmart used to do, and they still do, I think, for giving analytics back to their suppliers, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's gonna, you know, see similar stories or similar kinds of things in our industry. Yeah, so we've talked a little bit about how um, the industrial internet is going to transform GE, and we talked about some of the use cases. How is it gonna transform your customers and the way they operate in terms of maybe using this data for new types of uh, services, new lines of business that they hadn't even thought of? And you mentioned just now a good example, Walmart, who shares this data with their suppliers. And there's so many different ways you can use this data. How do you see this kind of changing your customer's business and you, is there, is there a, a shift in mindset that's going to have to happen in, uh, with your customers? Do they understand the, the possibilities here? Is there a kind of an education yeah. that has to happen from GE's perspective? Yeah. I, as a researcher, I always get worried about talking about the, you know, GE's customers too much. Um, but I, I think, you know, it's w one of the things that we talk about is giving customers zero unplanned downtime and basically means 
um, you know, if we're supplying uh, uh, gas turbines for a power plant, we want to minimize at all cost that those turbines or whatever asset equipment it is, whatever assets that they are, that they don't shut down when they don't expect it. And so that's zero unplanned downtime. And I think if the if if we deliver on on what we want to do, it will give the customers you know the trust that the plant will be running all the time and that they can be very methodical and have a lot of you know um, uh, lead time to when they need to do maintenance and things. And so I think that would change. Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine that you know how the the, the partnership between um, our company and customers would also change and to be more you know it's I think it's already pro probably very symbiotic but even more kind of you know, um, mutual beneficial things. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that people talk around like consumption economics, I think that's, yeah. you know, I think data and advanced analytics brings consumption economics into new industries and that's probably gonna happen. Mm. Uh, so talk a little bit about the challenges that you're facing. What are the biggest challenges in terms of working with industrial data? Um, you know, we did some research, David Poor and I, uh, along with GE around uh, what some of the requirements for the platform and there were security concerns, of course, and mm -hmm. there's challenges with scales we've talked about. What are some of the biggest challenges from your perspective some of the research that you're doing in terms of um, you know really getting this into the hands of, of end users and uh, companies that uh, you know want to use it to take advantage of and, and improve their business yeah so I you know I look at this um, uh, very um, um, uh, with a focus on the analytic building component so uh, previously I was doing a lot of machine learning work and uh, one of the big challenges especially in our industry is is that the data isn't really simple, right? It's not web pages, right. you know. Um, it's not, you know, somebody purchasing something on a website. You know, it's data from a, a pressure sensor, you know, inside a, 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 an aircraft engine. And as a modeler, somebody who needs to build analytics to, get, to give our customers lead time um, and help us do maintenance, you know, I need to use that data to build a model, to build some analytics. And it's not easy to use it. You know, there's, you know, you really do need to be a mechanical engineer to really understand what that temperature th measurement means or pressure me measurement, how to leverage it. And so I had s seen firsthand that challenge of working with this complex data. And um, it's, it's very beneficial to have such a good company where you can work side by side with like aviation engineers. Yeah. You know, but to go s to scale this, this uh, analytics, to scale the use of data, you know, I really believe that we have to conquer this challenge of making data more self-describing is what I like to call it, mm. using semantics so that um, you know, I can, if I need to, call that engineer, but if I, if I can just look up in an ontology or something about what that data means, mm -hmm. how to process it, I think that will be game changing. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the technologies here, you know, it's really cool to see so many people, so many new products around HDFS and Hadoop and the ecosystem. Um, and I just imagine all this data putting into these big data lakes or whatever, whatever and you know, somebody still needs to keep track of it. And how do we yeah. handle all that metadata? And so I think that that's one of the challenges that I'm, I, I, you know, would keep me up at night thinking about how, it, you know, if all of GE gave us all their data into a big Hadoop distribution, what am I going to do mm -hmm. to manage that? That's where I think we need some new kind of technology. Yeah, that's a good point. The, the kind of the governance, uh, you've got compliance issues you've got to deal with. You've got to keep track of that data. You've got to know who accessed it when and how they're using it and that kind of thing. And that's yeah. not always the first thing you think about. And you know, as a you know, some of the cool stuff that gets the front page headlines or the cool analytics that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you've got to manage that as an asset, and, and you've got to you know comply with regulations, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about your take on the conference. You know, you've seen all the vendors over there. I mean, it's it's a crazy it's a crazy market right now. I mean, there are so many vendors in this space from from the huge big players like uh, IBM and EMC, mm -hmm. and then you've got you know, Pivotal, which I know GE is, is, is partnering with, down to, you know, little startups that have got uh, just, you know, maybe a little niche feature in, in Hadoop that they're trying to market. So what is yeah. your take of what's going on over there? It's really interesting. I'm enjoying it. There's a lot of, of, uh, of cool technology. I like that everybody's got a play on the elephant, like in, <laughs> on their shirt or in stuffed uh, yeah. animals or things. Um, it is, um, it's a very exciting time. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to keep straight all these different, you know, Thanks, but it, yeah. but I think it's good. You know, there needs to be this mass expansion of these ecosystem infrastructure tools, and then you know uh, some of them you know probably um, would complement each other, and that, and you start to see that. You see a lot of Hadoop plus Hive, you know, uh, SQL on top of you know different NoSQL stores, and so that's you know it's definitely when I first started looking at when it was just the Apache Hadoop, you know, when mm -hmm. Cutting just kind of started to do that work, um, and we were using that. You know, it was difficult 
to get those first things up and running on Hadoop. Um, and it, the, the field has come a tremendous. And it's really great. I mean, we internally are looking at um, these technologies and using them in production mm -hmm. environments, and that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you guys, not that this is your area specifically, but you, you, know, you partner with Pivotal, but you're also partnering with companies like, I think, Cisco and others. And how do you, how do you navigate that, that, with very that good people. ecosystem? Yeah. I mean, that's that's got to be a challenge. Who do you, how do you make those decisions around who you partner with and, and when, it's, when it's time to kind of um, start integrating and, and co-innovating with some of these other companies? Yeah, there's somebody on it. <laughs> there's, you know, some, there's some great guys out here. Um, and uh, we do some work where uh, they'll connect us with some of the new companies and we'll do some like technology evaluation. Um, but, but we have a great team of guys doing like mm -hmm. venture activities, partnership ecosystem plays. Uh, it's not my area of specialty, but I certainly enjoy when they bring in the CTO from a startup. Yep. You know, being privileged to talk to them, I don't know of another company you know, that gives me access like that to some of these really cool startups. It's yeah, that must be uh, that must be great when you've got some of these really interesting companies coming in and they're, you know, obviously they would love to partner with GE, so and you, you get to access to their technology and their yeah. their know-how, so. Sometimes I wish I had a bigger checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. GE, big player, uh, we enjoyed working with you guys and had a lot of fun on both events in Chicago here in San Francisco, great work, good investment. You guys put in a lot of wood behind the arrow and it's really important also to your business and your customers. Great to see. Big day Data revolutions happening, continuing to grow. And this is the cube, present at creation at, at the beginning, continuing to ride the big data wave. We are here in Silicon Valley, where all the action is happening this week for Big Data SV event, and we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>